Togo is just a thin sliver of West Africa, a line of land that ranges from the Atlantic Ocean to the depths of inland Burkina Faso. But size has never been an issue for this culturally rich place and, being in and much bigger Ghana, still endy ringly and excitingly off the beaten track. It bursts from the region in a medley of misty mountains and swamps, winding rivers and muddy, back and tree, all trodden by the occasional elephant herd and bush buck. In the south, the salty spray of the Atlantic crashes against the beaches, and lit, little lagoons host water sporting locals all the while. The capital at Lomi ticks over to the buzz of modern energy, still proud of its elegant Parisian-style boulevards and cafes. And deep in the north the Sahil takes over. It's here that the savannah dominates, and the mysterious adobe villages of Katonaku pop up a UNESCO World Heritage Site that's certainly worth. Palm trees burst from the mud caked in shacks and low lying bungalows of Togo's outdoor sea hub. A town set beneath the jungle dressages of the plateau region, and peppered with colonial relics and the occasional European style church spire. It's famed for its back and tree and bazaars. The former yields up gushing waterfalls at spots like Timeg Bank Poeta, and offers the Mountagu the highest in the country. The latter means craft sellers whittling away at voodoo wood carvings, interesting ceramic creations, mysterious religious trinkets, and of course coffee. Hailed as the land of the Batama River by the UNESCO organization that gave it that coveted World Heritage Site status back in 2004, the Kautomaku of northern Togo is a region of rustic villages, from adobe walls and thatched roofs. The whole area not only offers a glimpse at the traditions of the tribal folk who fled here to avoid capture during the years of the slave coast, but also breathtaking vistas of mountain-topped horizons, mud-cracked bushlands, and undulating hills of greenery. You might also see the area listed as the Tambam of Ali, don't worry. They are one and the same. Lomi is a throbbing market town that sways to the beat of African drums and the rhythm of endless markets. Founded in the 1800s by German and other European traders, it still has its mercantile character just look to the ports, where endless depots of cocoa and palm products and even oil are loaded onto tankers. However, today, the concrete jungle is balanced, out by the earthy tribal pull of voodoo. This mesmerizes buyers in the sprawling fetish stalls and talisman emporiums of the city's folk market. Rarely does a city bless a country with its name, and even rarer is it for just a small clutch of voodoo shrines and mud brick huts to inspire the moniker for the entire nation. But that's precisely what happened here, in the small town of Togo as it was known then. 
Back in 1884, the expeditionary Nachtigal signed an agreement with the chieftain of the land for German hegemony to extend to this part of West Africa. Today, visitors can still see copies of the interesting document, providing they ask the tribal leader nicely. Other draws include a pretty colonial cathedral and a series of little beaches along the lakeshore for strolling. The second town on the banks of Lake Togo that's worth a visit, Agbo Drofo is known for its popular resort hotel, the Hotel Le Lac. This luxurious medley of shimmering alfresco pools and sunning terraces butts upright to the water's edge, offering guests a luxurious stay on the side of the country's famous lagoon. The town itself is also known for its proliferation of water sports, and it's possible to organize everything from pedal boating to jet skiing out on the surface. On the other side of the town, to the south, is the Atlantic Ocean, complete with its rolling waves and stretches of sand. Salt-washed canoes line the sandy shore of Anaho, an Anaho that was once the capital of German Togo, an Anaho that once boomed with the money and dubious merchandise of slave traders from across Africa and Europe alike. Yet, today the erstwhile kingpin of the colonial age here is now just a sleepy little fishing village, relying heavily on the fruits of the Atlantic to feed its clutch of locals. And talking of the locals, they are a the and interesting people who still have a deep zeal for the national voodoo faith. Togo's largest national parks at smack bang in the heart of the nation. It encompasses nearly 2,000 square kilometers and is famed for its thick forests and riprian woodlands. The piece de resistance, and much of the reason the park was first established back in the 1970s, is the presence of the Yuba rare forest elephant. Unfortunately, populations of the great beast have been significantly reduced due to illegal poaching in the area, but conservation efforts are underway, and there are also bay duca and antelopes, cobs and Going all the way back to 1971, the Riprian habitats that clutch the gushing courses of the Komanyu River in the northern part of Togo are now protected by the Kiran National Park. Over the decades, the whole reserve has been continuously expanded and added to, giving it a diversity of environments that range from swamplands to rocky escarpments. The main draw are the elephants, which can be seen lining the water sides throughout the day. However, there are also loads of bush and antelopes to boot. Oddly, the Kiran National Park is more accessible from neighboring Ghana than from Togo's capital at Lomi, which sits on the coast more than 500 kilometers to the south of.
perhaps the least visited of all of Togo's national parks. The protected region of the Fossa Lions lies the farthest north of all. Apart from the mysterious mid brick towns of Kautomaku, it's the main draw of the Savans region. A patchwork of savanna and muddy swamplands, mires and acacia dotted plains that plays host to elephants even if the local numbers of West Africa's largest mammal have decreased considerably in recent times. Unusually, the lands of Fosso lions totally encompass the rustic town of Tanjuere. The great hub of the central river lands, Sukkot is crisscrossed by the courses of the Mono and the Mo, while its backcountry is irrigated by the channels of the Mi and Rink Ponjo, Kapahundi, and the, and if that's one too many rivers for you, just look at what the locals have carved out of the land using the lifeblood brought by the waters of the faraway hills. Corn, yams, soy, kosava the list goes on. It's hardly a wonder that the main attraction is the indelible character of the farming locals. Add to that the fascinating rituals of the Simasi warriors during the Kota Kali. A long 400 km drive from the capital of Lomi. The far-flung town of Kara can be found clutching the edge of the winding Go River. Home to nearly 100,000 people, it's actually one of the largest towns in the country and has a bustling marketplace with voodoo trinkets and farmers' goods aplenty to match. Kara is primarily a good stopover on the good stopover on the way to the great national parks Fossa Lions and Kiran and UNESCO regions of northern Togo, but also figures a crossroads between Benin in the east and Ghana in the west. Taste the fufuyums of Bassa and you'll never want to leave at least. That's what the locals might tell you in this agricultural kingpin of the Kara region, central, where the main draw is the type of yum produced in the surrounding fields. But then again, there's rarely a yum as popular in the national kitchen as the labeco type grown in Bassa. Of course, that's not it, eh? You can also meet voodoo locals and tour the haunting so-called House of the Dead, which honors the tribal chieftains of old you'll see ritual sacrifices of goats and other Fifty thousand strong mango is at a sea town surrounded by the sweeping savannas of the appropriately named Savins region in northern Togo. It's a place of hard-working villagers and zealous mosque goers, all bolstered by the presence of the Kiran National Park and by trade links across to Ghana thanks to the border in the west. Set on the main north-south road that heads into the far reaches of the country from Lomi, it's a fine stopover for those seeking the mysteries of the Katamaku UNESCO site.
In ages gone by, the small town of Atekpam and its little basin in the midst of the impossibly green Atakura mountain was the site of an awesome battle. It saw the forces of two of West Africa's greatest empires the Oyo and the Ashanti clash, with mercenaries and fighters from countless tribal groups in the region joining in the fight. Today, more than 300 years on, there's little trace of the same violence, and Atekpam is a pleasant stronghold of the native Yoruba folk. One of the main producers of palm oil and centers for palm oil processing in Togo, Sevi is an industrial place at heart. That also means it's a lived-in, modern town, with bustling, locals and an energetic character. You'll find colorful brick-built churches rubbing shoulders with thatched and adobe yurt houses. You'll see dance festivals erupt in the streets during religious holiday times. And most importantly for the intrepid travelers out there you'll be able to organize hiking excursions and explorations out to the Foret de Lily and the wider. Subscribe to the channel and click like please.